Hey, welcome to Fud Life, where we like wood and steel guns and fishing in John boats. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Today's video is on the Browning BAR. Not to be confused with the the uh, fully automatic machine gun that was used in World War One and World War Two. This is a, a sporting rifle, semi-automatic rifle, uh, developed by Browning in the '60s. Um, this this model here this this rifle was built in 1967 and it's the first year of production um this it goes way back with my family it's been in my family for 55 years my mom bought this for my dad in 1967 for christmas and uh i i think he was completely surprised <laughs> according to my brother who was around in them days i was a baby then but uh it was well out of his price range uh, back in those days, and um, he I think he was quite surprised by it. Uh, I've been using it since I was about 19 years old. Uh, I started deer hunting with my wife's family back in the late 80s. I guess I was I was 19 or 20 years old when I borrowed this gun the first time. My dad used it probably through the early 70s and didn't have much success deer hunting. He, I guess he had crappy spots. And, you know, I think that back in those days, the deer hunting wasn't as good as it is, is today. Uh, they, it was before they started the restoration of the whitetail in Missouri. Or, or they had, had it going on, but it hadn't gotten to the point that it is today. We have plenty of deer to hunt today. Uh, anyway, back to the story. Uh, I started using it in the in the late 80s, I guess, and I used it for four or five years, and and uh, I, I mistakenly left it in uh, hanging out of the case, and it was in the back of a pickup truck, and it rolled out of the case and just scratched the living tar out of the stock, and and. Uh, I was sick about it. I had to go home and tell my dad about his treasured rifle that I screwed up. And he he, uh, he ended up sanding it down and, and he redid it in polyurethane. So this is not the original finish. Um, it's, I believe this is a, a French walnut by the looks of it. Uh, anyway, he redid the stock and you know the the check rings knocked back on it some it's not as crisp as it was originally but uh it still works for me and this this year will be my 38th year using this rifle hunting i've killed every deer i've ever killed with it uh, i put the old loophole scope on it about 20 years ago so it had a Tasco scope on it, which I still have. Back in the day, Tasco scopes weren't bad. Uh, it's a lot darker than this one, but this is a really nice scope. It's a VX2, and it's back in the day, man. It it's clear as a bell. It's it's better than than the VX2 nowadays. So anyway, it's a loads from the bottom here, and this magazine comes out of here if you want to put this in your pocket. This holds four and then one in the chamber, so a total of five. Uh, I guess about five or six years ago, I had to change the recoil spring. It's gotten a little weak on me. Um, I put this left-handed safety on it. Um, it's it's the stainless color because that's all that was available at the time. And I needed it right away, so I bought what they had. Uh, this side here has a pronghorn sheep in the engraving. But you know, Browning's just have beautiful bluing on them. I can't see it at all. It's the lighting. It's hard to see it. Well, I have to get better picture. Then on this side, there's a bull elk. This is a beautiful engraving. I think it's totally cool. I've always loved it. And it's got a little scroll work there on the bottom. This one being a early model has the 
has a black trigger instead of the traditional browning gold trigger. It's nice, lightweight, easy to shoot. It's uh, being semi-auto, the recoil isn't terrible on it either. It's it's actually uh, not bad to shoot at all. I like taking it to the range and just blazing away with it. In fact, let's go to the range now and blaze away with it. <laughs> okay, here we are at the range. Uh, I got a target set up down there at 100 yards. Uh, typically, and every year, uh, I like to shoot the rifle a bit before the gun season starts just to make sure my scope's good and, and it's lined up with the ammo that I'm using. I used this last year. Uh, it's a Hornady uh, Interlock. That's right, Hornady Interlock, 165 grain bullet over uh, IMR 4064 at 47.5 grains. Uh, it's it's not the greatest. I mean, I get probably two MOA with it. Uh, I really have never developed a great load for this rifle yet. Um, every year I try something new. This is this is what I used last year, and it it, it was good. It was adequate. Um, but I have a new one here that I'm going to try out here in a few minutes. But uh, let's let's put three shots on the target with this stuff here. <clears throat> Start out with the center of the target. Slightly low. Try one more shot. About an inch up from the last shot. That's one, two, three shots. One inch apart. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's not a bad load. It, it does the job. But back to my story, I was thinking on my way out here. Uh, you know, when I put that scratch in this gun, every year I went back to, to borrow it again, and it would have another layer of crap on it. He put uh, uh, duck chaps on it which are like a, a zip-on vinyl protective uh, sheath that, that they put on uh, pretty shotguns back in the day when they would go duck hunting. And he, he modified it and made it fit, and, and then he started taping the barrel up, and it, it, was a, it was almost embarrassing to me <laughs> to have to hunt with the thing. But I didn't care. The thing was, I mean, it, it put deer on the ground right now. So I didn't care what he did to it as long as I could use it. And uh, eventually he gave it to me for Christmas uh, when I was about 30 years old or so. <laughs> and that's when, that's, when the, uh, that's when the loophole went on it. And, and uh, it's been in this configuration ever since. So let me uh, grab a couple more rounds of this stuff. before I start moving the scope around or anything. Yeah, back in the late 70s, I guess, he got, my dad got it, he got bit by the duck hunt bug, and he never looked back. He never went deer hunting again. So this thing just laid around in the, in the uh, gun cabinet for years until I started using it. And uh, we we would take it out and shoot it periodically, just to just to just to shoot it. 
but after uh, I started using it, it got it started getting used regularly. In fact, every bump, nick, and scratch that's on it got put there by me. Yeah, I'm shooting, shooting about the same spot. They're all within an inch of each other, except for I got one, one high one. Uh, I think I'll take one more shot and maybe adjust the scope a couple of clicks, and that'll be it. We'll be good. And it's got a great trigger on it, I'll tell you that. Can't complain about that whatsoever. Yeah, that'll that'll do. They're all it's pretty good. I am going to move up four clicks and over two clicks. Let's do that now. The old loop hold, uh, one click is a quarter inch at 100 yards. So we're going to go one inch. So that would be one, two, three, four clicks up. And I'm going to go back left two clicks. That should do her. So I need to hang on to some of this ammunition for uh, for deer season because it's shooting it pretty well. Try a couple more shots uh, with this stuff just to make sure I move the scope in the right direction. Oh, that's great. Now that one looks low. I know I went up. <laughs> I know I went up. Stinker. Yeah, I did. Let's try another one. Try a different part of the target, I think. So I can't use all my ammo up. Okay, this, this has got to do it because I want to save 10 for gun season. I don't have any more of these uh, projectiles, and I'm not sure I could get them or not. I guess I may be looking for them. I'm going to try the upper left diamond. Those two are touching each other. I'm still an inch off to the left. 
or to the right, excuse me, I'm off to the right, one inch. I'm going to have to move that. I may be loading some ammunition because I want this thing dialed in. Let's try that. Let's see what kind of result I get. I know you didn't stop here to watch me sight in a gun. I don't know how much of this I'm going to include on my video. Okay, that put her centered up. But now it's shooting low. Why does that happen? I'll try let's try a couple of shots with this stuff now this one is a IMR 4064 again 47.5 grains of Hornady SST at 165 grains so this shouldn't shoot much different than than the uh, interlock Except for this is a ballistic tip bullet. Let's try the bottom left diamond this time. Wow, that's really low. that again. Oh, they're right next to each other. I do believe that it likes this other stuff better. It likes that uh, interlock bullet better than the SST. Hard to believe, but if I remember right from last year, it shot better with the interlock bullets. Let's try a couple more of these uh, SSTs. I'm not going to change the scope a whole bunch. Messing with these. These are all within an inch of each other. And that's acceptable, too. Plenty good. All right, so I'm going to give her one. I hate to do it, but I'm going to shoot one more of these. Right, I can always find more bullets, right? No. <laughs> you feel lucky and blessed to find shit when you when you want it. It's ridiculous. Let's go with the upper upper right diamond. This old rifle's got a great trigger, I know that. And one more for good measure. Yeah, that'll that'll do. That will put a deer on the ground. All right, everybody. I guess I could take a few shots at the gopher for fun. Move the camera around so you can see it too. Okay, this is at the gopher at 100 yards. Oh, it 
looks like I missed him. Can't believe it. Try one more time. Either that or he ain't moving. I tried the ram next to him. Seems like it's hitting him. That was a miss. So here's a target. Anyway, these were the SSTs. Uh, these were the interlock. Adjusted the scope, got these two touching, and then this, this one here. I don't know what the hell happened there. And the last two shots were these two, and they were also SSTs. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be back out here before deer season, and uh, I'll dial her in a little bit more. I hope you liked the content in today's video. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. And go get you one of these dudes, man. They're a blast. And they put deer on the ground every time. Have a good one.